Hey, what's up? It's Wizard Fu. This is another live stream. Um, currently working on particle systems, but check this out. I started a sketch of um, like a key art piece for this new game. So this might be pr something pretty exciting to work on this week. But I got to get some code today. I had a nice flow with the art this morning, drawing this stuff, working on different layers and of detail and highlighting and stuff like that. Man, uh, I reconnected with my Wacom tablet. It's been it's been a while. I've been in uh, my tablet. Had been in Thailand. Well, when I traveled to Thailand, I didn't have my tablet. I just had my um, little touchpad type thing, and I got okay at making pixel art with my finger on a trackpad, basically, or on a yeah, it's one of these Apple external trackpad thingies. Um, but yeah, dude, the Wacom is so much better. It's so much better to have an actual pen in your hand. And uh, be able to sort of, I don't know, move the camera around nicely. But anyways, let's get on to the code. Um, check this out. This is kind of cool too. I've made some performance improvements. Um, just came out of the blue last night. I was like, wait a minute, why don't I try this? And I got a lot of, let's see what we got here for frame rate. I mean, still we're getting nowhere near a good frame rate. While live streaming. But there are some definite improvements been made that make it so um, most of the time it's running out 60 frames a second while even while running around the screen. So while you, while you move around the screen and you're actually shifting the camera around, there's a lot of work the, uh, the voxel engine has to do drawing new um, entities, determining which entities are now on screen, stuff like that. So that's more efficient. Looks like we're still not up to a good frame rate while streaming, uh, but that's because the CPU is super engaged with uh, encoding this video and I have an old laptop. But anyways, uh, there's a couple issues. Oh, look at that. Okay, but anyways, the issue with the particle system that I'm talking about, so the particle system looks, uh, is mostly working, right? The three-dimensional aspect of it is looking good. See how the little um, <clears throat> particles of fire are moving straight upwards above the, uh, the flame entity. Uh, that's because the particle system is purely 3D, so it's basically ca calculating all its positions in 3D and then translating them into 2D by projecting them with the model view matrix. So, um, but there's one issue. See how sometimes they leave behind this purple dot? That's actually the, the ground showing through. There's actually a pink color underneath everything to let me know if it, this ever happens. But it only happens at certain angles. So if I switch to like this angle right here, all of a sudden, it's perfectly fine. But if I switch back to this angle, we got those pink dots appearing. Not sure what that is. It might be a timing thing where that where it's drawing the particle in one frame and then erasing it in the next, or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what it is. But if I could tackle that and fix what that bug is, that'd be awesome. But um, another couple things I need to do are to get them to be uh, semi-transparent so um, right now they're not fully they're not even transparent at all I'm not sure why I think it might have something to do with uh, the way transparent voxels are handled so that would be also awesome and, and one more thing I would like to create a spiral cone shape type of um, particle system and uh, let's let's start with that let's start with the spiral so let's start coding Let's get to the code then. Okay, so voxel, um, no, particles. We need a new type of particle system. Uh, it's all these, let's go um, spiral. So the spiral goes, it's, the particles all start at a certain point, but they're swirling out. Um, So I think we need one more variable for this. Like we want, I want the starting radius and the ending radius. And it has a vector already. It has a size already, but this, oh, wait a minute. I guess we could make
Yeah, so we need at least one more variable here. So we could, oh, I got it. So if the, ch no, that wouldn't work. Okay, so we do need it. We do need like an overall size, uh, like a example, just like a big old rectangular cube, right? In three dimensions, that is the overall space. But we also need like a, a small, for this to be a spiral, uh, for the particles to sort of spiral like a cone, we need an, a starting radius and an ending radius. Okay, so let's put this type in here. And we need to read its, well, we need to copy its radius. Oh, this is particle. Okay. I was like, why doesn't that work? There we go. Okay, so min radius. And I should make this also have a mid radius as well. We have we're doing that with all of these other ones anyways. And there's one other thing, I think particles also have an op equal. No, they don't. Oh. Maybe that's a different class I'm thinking of. This is the the actual particle itself has an op equal. Okay. Alright, so we've got the radiuses. Okay, now when we load it from data. We also want to load in these radii. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and try this out by modifying the fires particle system. Let's make that kind equals spiral size radius. Okay, we want this to be way bigger. Maybe like a hundred by a hundred. By a hundred, shoot, I don't know. Boogie! What's up, brother? How you doing, man? And so we got size, da, 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 radius. So I want to start at a small radius, something like 50, and go to, at the middle, maybe 75, and at the top, 100. Okay, so the spiral, so I want the spiral to start, right, at, like this to be a cone shape of particles going around in this in a spiral but all kind of random and coning up to the to where they get to the very top 
I think it still look really neato. Neato, man. We've got the colors. Okay, let's see what happens if I just do that to start with. I'm not sure how these spiral entities will work. Whoa. Okay. Oh, it's just treating them like a regular, um, because the vector is going straight up, it's just treating them like a regular old, uh, um, cube shaped thing. Okay, so we need to now have a type of render component, or I mean a type of uh, particle system movement. Sweet, yeah, hopefully this turns out really neat. Like, I just want it to be a cone shape of big tons of particles, and uh, to be able to throw a couple of these around the, the battlegrounds, I think it'll look really neat. Um... Okay, where it starts moving all the particles, where it, this is it, tick particle? It moves every single particle based on its current vector. Okay, so the vector, it will, will need to, um, we need some special positions, but I think that'll all work itself out. Wait a minute. Okay, so we need we need like the uh, we need good starting positions. We need to, we need the movement to change. So every every time it ticks, it needs to take the vector for um, for each particle and make it sort of like like change itself so its course spirals itself upward, not quite perfectly like. Uh, along the vector, but also going outward. All right. This is random. Particle, particle effect none. Kind equals random, all other kinds are this. It just keeps it within the area. Okay, so if we look at it, if we think of it as as a long, this is tricky math. <laughs> wow. But anyways, if we have a vector going straight up, um, just to keep it simple, that's our vector. Um, then our um. The like the x and the y. So if if we're going straight up, that's the z, right? So that's the overall vector. But then the angle that it's at, if you look, if you think of it as if it were a circle, come like just looking straight down at the z axis. If it were a circle, then the current angle of it on the xy plane would determine its x and y yeah that just determines its xy and then you've always got the same z and then you could just normalize that vector and then you would sh should be able to do it so wow that's kind of it's crazy complicated but anyways Let's see if that we can get this to work. Let's call this spiral movement if kind equals C, C kind spiral. Okay, so we've got 
dude, spiral movement. How do you, how would I change it along a different vector? I don't think I can, I don't, I don't know if how I can make this. I don't have, I don't have the vector skills to wait. No, maybe I do. If we take the vector, you're supposed to move along and then you cross it. No, we would want the perpendicular of it, of a three-dimensional vector. No, okay, so we would want the perpendicular vector on the x plane now yeah if it were if it were the vector were straight up on the z. We would want the perpendicular of, or we would want the, we would want to blend the two vectors of, of the two perpendiculars. I think that would give the right. Damn, this is hard. Okay, I think I can only do this with the Z going straight up at first. That'll simplify the math quite a, a bit. Okay, so uh, we would also need a period for this. <coughs> I'm starting to realize how challenging this is. I thought, oh, this will be simple. Some spiral, spiral movement, some cosines, some sines, boom, it's done. But it's not so easy. So we need, okay, we need the actual percentage along the Z axis. Here's our Z percent. So we need a period as well. Uh, I guess that could work. On, that could base be based on the speed. So if our speed is like one, or or we could do a period based on the size, the z size. Okay, let's call this variable t. And then multiply it by a quarter. So we just get, or, how about const in and periods? So we go t divided by equals number of periods. And now we've got a variable that's no. No, we want to multiply by the number of periods. And uh and then mod it by one.
Okay, so that should give us a T, which is sort of like the pers the pers uh, the the angle. This is actually the angle. Okay, so it's not T. Let's make this a angle. All right, and then so our m or p dot vec dot x no p dot vec dot set um, the the x is um, cosine of angle times I think it's just one pi. And uh, the overall vector dot Z. Wow. Okay, let's see what that, that does. I have no idea if that's anywhere near right. They're all going to start in a cube shape, but hopefully they sort of coalesce into a spiral shape based on this vector math. <laughs> Not at all. Okay. All right. Um, well then, yeah, Kobe, what's up, man? Yep, this is the new voxel engine. Yep, oh, I'll, I'll run it and show you a little bit. I'm working on particles right now. I want to do a huge, awesome-looking particle system. That would be sweet. I want to do like a spirally particle system. But yeah, this is the new voxel engine, so. Um, it's the goal is to make it look like Songbringer with its pixel art, but still be able to rotate the camera. So that's what this all is so far. It's just basically it's like imagine like Minecraft voxels, but making them way smaller. So every single voxel is really tiny. Every every single voxel is so tiny that it actually equates to about a pixel. So that's basically what this engine is. There's still a lot of little visual glitches I can work on, um, like. Especially like if I get to a certain pixel, the player's eyes will be two pixels high. It's like right there. There's the player's eyes are two pixels high. It happens a lot. And then also sometimes Jib's eye is two pixels tall. So there's these weird little issues sometimes. Like, But it, overall, I'm happy with what's been created so far. Oh gosh, this is leaving behind those pink particles. Huh. Okay, so what, what we need for the spiral is to make it so it, when it resets its position, Thanks, man. Uh, nah, sort of. I mean, I've sort of been able to refactor a lot of Songbringer's code to this uh, to this code base, but I really started with something different. I started with something completely fundamentally different, and that is basically not um, the way all the headers work in this game engine are a lot different. So basically, I've got this thing called Kit Foo. It's an uh, a wrapper layer around a game engine which sits on top of whatever game engine I'm using. Currently I'm using Cocos 2DX still, but I'm using so little of it at this point that I'm practically not even using it. And I could 
pretty soon I could just throw throw that away and maybe switch it for SDL or something like that. But um, the real goal there is to actually switch to my publisher's engine. There's just one little issue with OpenGL on it. So we just got to fix that little thing and I can switch to my publisher's engine. But the other uh, big thing about KitFu is that it's a, um, it's a really lightweight uh, compiling engine. It, it compiles super duper fast uh, because everything uses minimal headers. Instead of, like for example, I have a, like, like everything about it makes it so you don't have to include headers at all. And in fact, one of the biggest things it never includes is the STL. Like it, it never includes string, vector, map, any of the other stuff because it's so expensive for your compilation times. So basically it's, it's the Songbringer code base with a lot of refactoring gone on to get it to this point where it compiles super fast and is ready for 3D voxels. So that's what Kit Fu is, and I'm really excited about that, to have that sort of as a foundation for this game and this game engine, and hopefully I can use this in future games as well. In fact, I'm planning on it. I'm planning on making Songbringer 2 after this game, um, and I really want to make it with this 3D voxel engine too. So, um, yeah. Okay, so if we reset... We need to set a... Okay, so if we reset X, we would need to multiply X by the radius or something like that. Okay, if did reset, actually Z is the one where it's gonna, we're gonna hit. Um, so if we reset on the Z, then our P dot pause dot set is P dot pause dot XF divided by size dot XF multiplied by the min radius. Oh. And this is gonna be y, y, min radius, and then p dot pause dot zf. Yeah, you're working with Unreal? Right on. I'm glad to hear it, man. What's uh what are you writing it with? Uh like OpenGL, Vulkan, Metal, um DirectX. Writing game engines is fun. I mean, even though KitFu isn't really a game engine, it was fun to write at least like a layer, an interface layer of my own that I will always, I, like from now on, I never have to write, rewrite that interface. From every, all the games I write in the future, I can write them with this sort of, these headers, you know? And the, the CPP files will change over time, and I'm sure the headers will change over time as well. But the basic structure of this game engine is really how I prefer it to be, so... And maybe it won't be the perfect thing for other. It won't ever be the perfect thing for other people, but for me, this is the jam. OpenGL, sweet man. I like OpenGL. Simple, time tested, mother approved, kid tested, mother approved. What's that saying? Okay, so we're still not. Let's see if we get some good spiral movement now after a second once again we'll start with a oh yeah oh wait oh okay 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 so it did so it did move the particles down to a um the smaller radius well, that was weird 
couple of those. What's up with that? That's weird. Anyways, uh, the particles are going down to that smaller radius, but they're not moving upwards to the bigger radius. So we need uh, the Z to be multiplied by the Z percentage. So at first we're moving sort of a flatter angle and then they go steeper. Oh yeah. Yeah, how deep to go with abstracting systems? That's such a good question. Um, when I was abstracting the systems for this one, I uh, I would tend to write the headers first. Maybe that would help you. Like, I don't know, maybe it's, it's one oblique strategy you could try. Like, write the header first. And then um, and then you can be like, hey, do I like the way this header looks? Do I, do I, does this look like a header I'd like to use? Can I put this in my CPP file and use that comfortably? And then maybe that can help you write the systems a little bit cleaner. I don't know. Yeah, multi-threading, man. I don't, <laughs> I don't really use multi-threading much either. It's not, it's, it's not that difficult, but like, the question is sometimes, do you need it? Do you not need it? And right, all, all it really is is writing your system so they don't, they don't create any like race conditions. Um, and that's just basically writing, you have to write, either write your stuff so it doesn't, um, it doesn't use the same data or, um, write your threads so that, um, they use locks like mutexes when they're going to access a certain bit of data that two threads can access. So it's not, the, the basic concepts are not too difficult, but I, I, I hear you, man. I don't particularly like to do multi-threading myself. Um, there's some things that are pretty necessary for that, like maybe you want to do your rendering um, in a different thread than all the rest of your game logic, uh, at least. But um, as far as ser like a server goes, where it doesn't have to do any rendering at all, I've written a server before with, with completely single threaded, and it was no issue at all. So, in fact, I don't think multi-threading could have made it any faster. So. You know, the question is, do you want to do it or not? And yeah, in some cases, you're definitely going to want to do it, but. Okay, so we start with the smaller radius. We want to blend. Um. Got X and Y. If we make okay, if we want the vector, hmm. Oh, okay. Sweet. Isn't that isn't uh isn't RimWorld uh, turn based? Sweet, super light ECS, yeah, love that. Love entity component systems. Love the fact that you're making it super light. Heck yeah. Okay, all I gotta do is get the vector to be, the X and Y part of the vector to be multiplied by a factor that, um, Wait, we've already got the Z percentage. So yeah, yeah, let's call this Z percent again. And then we got float angle equals Z percent. And then we want to do vec the vector. How about this float? Vec uh, percentage equals one plus uh, 
max radius minus min radius times uh, the z percent Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, right, right. Yeah. It's nice, simple graphics. Cool, man. Yeah, I haven't played RimWorld. I've heard a lot about it, though. It sounds like a cool game. One, no. Is the max radius minus the min radius? Gives us that that I have no idea. <laughs> Let's start with it like this. And then just multiply this here. So that'll give us at one. Oh, that's, whoops. That's the wrong one there. Damn, we're still not getting any sort of outward movement. Oh, maybe because... Hold on a second. What if the Z is just multiplied by Z percent? Oh, no, no. This needs to be ZF as well. Oh, that's, that would have messed up all the math. Oh, that, that was messing up all the math. It was using a smaller version of the Z, so it was basically what, that Z was practically zero. So it was, or no, no, it was practically a thousand. So it was completely overwhelming the cosine and the sine there. There we go. Now we've got a little bit more of a spiral type movement. Sweet. Okay. I think it's hard to tell and why is it why is it like dragging behind okay let's see if we can get it to start start having the right radius yeah, it's starting to look awesome, huh? I mean, this if if I can get this to be a, I want it to be a cone shape, right? It's got a min radius at the bottom, which is smaller than the rest. In fact, let's make that radius even smaller. So we, let's make that radius like twenty five at the bottom. Uh, 
Okay, so that's the next goal. To get it to be the right radius there. So it's pause.x. P P dot pause. Oh. Okay, so when we're re resetting the Z, we're t oh, that's right. Okay, I had the math wrong there. This is what we need to do. We need to start with basically something like, actually, this is what we want. That one there. That line of code. When we reset the Z, we need to reset the actual position of the particle. A little bit smarter. So, instead of multiplying by size.xf here, we need min radius. Same thing with this size.yf. And then this is just p.pause.zf. Okay, there. I think that should give us... Oh no, no, we need we need half of the x1 minus the x0. That's gonna this is not gonna be right. Yeah, that's just whack. Alright, it's just really weird. Okay, this needs to be x0 plus x1 minus x0 times a half times that. This is y0 plus y1 minus y0 times 0. Oh my god. This is just p dot pause. <laughs> I mean, pause. It's just pause. which I think get bounds size minus anchor. Oh, the anchor also, okay. That kind of was the simplest way I can write this for now. There, all right. Okay, hopefully that makes it so it does Get that cone shape. <clears throat> nope. Damn, why not? How about if we, maybe it might be that it's resetting on the X or the Y. So 
So let's just do that. Let's go. This should be Z zero. So anytime it resets at all, it'll just start back at Z zero. Yeah, Vim C tags. What about you, man? I mean, person. <laughs> Don't mean to assume. Whoa, they just evaporated. They went nowhere. That was crazy. What heck what the heck happened there? Oh, they're all wait, they're all down here. What happened? <laughs> they flew away. Your visual studio at work? Oh yeah? VS code, yeah. VS Code seems pretty good. Right? What the heck? What, what happened there? What was that? Is it Z0? I mean, that's really all I changed right there. Z0. P.pause.set. Oh. I guess this should be a before all that code. Anyways. But that shouldn't have caused. I don't think that. Yeah, Z0 should work there. This is pause.set on a float base. Maybe it was because it. it that code needed to be up there. <laughs> Bye. See you, particles. Where'd you go? What you doing? Did they fly like around somewhere else? I don't see them anywhere. So weird, and they're all like piled right there. When I rotate the camera, they're like piled there for a second. There they are. Oh, they might be under the ground. Oh, I know the wind, man. You can tell there's wind, huh? Right? I got that effect right. Okay, so, um,. Could they? Right, maybe they're actually right on the edge. What if I add one to the position for Z? Huh, this really isn't the most important thing I could be doing right now. I need to be looking at that bug with the pink Trail. What? <laughs> they just disappear. I think, yeah, and they're all piled down there, man. Piled down nowhere. Okay, I'm going to set a break point here. Oops, wrong project. All right, we don't need that anymore. Oh, that was super cool. Gosh, this is some something worth mentioning, actually. I know, right? Xcode is... Yeah, I definitely have my own personal nightmares I've had with Xcode. That's why I switched to Vim. 
What? Really? And it was today? Crazy. No way. This is worth... This is... The, oh, I gotta check this out. Preview release. This is the preview release. I want the actual release. Which one is the actual release? What? That's crazy. I wonder how big it is. But you can code in C sharp, F sharp. Oh, and there's no C. <laughs> no C. Wow. No C. Wait. Maybe it's C plus plus only on um VS code, yeah, is, is it getting better? I hope it's got I actually liked it when I first tried it, but I do prefer Vim. What's up, Dom Killer? Glad you are, what's up guys? Let's try that link out. Microsoft's websites like that. Like sometimes you'll find several links. Oh, it just switched me back to the Mac version automatically. It's like I I detect that this is a this is definitely a Mac computer. I'm gonna point you to the Mac page, even though you want to visit the not Mac page. I'm gonna mess with you. For a second. Hey, look at that. You can run you can run an iPhone simulator. And an Android emulator. Sweet. Visual Studio 2019. Oh, I bet this is especially awesome for people that are wanting to do Unity development, right? You got C sharp in in a visual studio instead of uh unity's editor whatever that thing is well so it doesn't say you got c plus plus right here yeah i mean i did that i started with the url for the non see this start that it just automatically puts me over to mac See? Yeah, you use VS Code with Unity? Sweet. Hey, Dominic Killer, how's, how's everything going, man? How's school going? Check this out. You can extract entire methods, rename. That seems pretty powerful. Like any kind, anything that'll help you refactor faster is pff, it's definitely time worth. It's time well spent. Refactoring sometimes takes just way too long. Yep, you just got C sharp and F sharp. Looks like what's F sharp? Oh, change the Mac to Windows? That's a good idea. I was assuming that that was the Windows URL. No, yeah, see it just... I think that was the Windows URL, is the one without anything there. Without 
the features and all that. Yeah, last push. Final year project. Wow, dude. I can't believe wow, I can't believe it's already that time. Dude. We've known each other a while. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Win, maybe. No. Nope. Same thing. Well, so that's a that's an interesting tidbit. Visual Studio coming to Mac. That's pretty neat. But what's F sharp? What the heck is F sharp? As in the programming language. You're not gonna get much sleep this month. I hear ya. Dang. Whoa, cool logo. That's a sweet ass logo. Definitely the sweetest logo I've ever seen for a programming language. So is it C sharpy? It's kind of like C sharp, but it's F sharp. I need to see some of it. This definitely is not very C sharpy, is it? It's more like JavaScript. Yeah, I think this is. Is this like basically just an extension of job like a their own version of JavaScript or something? Anyways, I'm getting distracted here. Oh, I was mentioning that I sped up Voxel when I'm when I when the Voxel engine casts shadows, it this got sped up by like a hundred percent faster. So it went from like the whole system was taking up one second out of ten seconds which is a lot. And then, uh, and then with these optimizations, it went down to 500 milliseconds out of 10 seconds. So that was all done basically by, by using, um, three floating points for all the positions instead of using my V3 class. So I've got the V3 class, which is, is a vector of three, uh, integers or floating points. Um, and instead of using those, if I just use the straight up float and do all the math here in this function, it sped up, it sped it up so like dramatically. So that was a pretty cool uh, optimization. All right, so we wanted, to, uh, yeah, there. Okay, so when it resets the particle, I'm going to check out where its position is and its vector. Oh, sweet. Let's have some info on the whole C++ situation. Oh, this is for V. Well, that's cool. So it's kind of like a preview version. There's, they're wor still working on it. That's pretty neat. What's up, Morgulad? Uh, GLM library. What what library is that for? Is that for that's for GL, OpenGL. Yeah, I tried that. I tried a Unity build like that for single single translation unit, but it just uh, it's not. It's good for some situations where like what was it good for again? I don't know. It just wasn't. It didn't work really for my project. Yeah, I already I already used something else though. Um, what's this? Uh, 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you got Matrix 4s, Vec 3s, and all that. Oh. So they're like, oh, they're like, oh, are they super optimized with SIMD and all that? Yeah, you're, that's what you're saying? Cool. This is like a good thing. Maybe I should actually base my Vector 3 class off that. Because all the SIMD optimizations would be... They might even improve improve the performance of that uh, shadow casting even more. It's worth a shot. Let's download it. Take a look, quick look at their Vector 3. Just steal the SIMD stuff. It actually might be a better thing to do. Let's just take a quick peek at it, yeah? I'm gonna open this up in TextMate because it's got a nice little file browser built in. Desktop, GLM. Do they? Of course, they're gonna do some SIMD stuff for the for the vector three, right? Or is that only vector fours? It's any vector, right? Any any multiple amount of floating points and. Matrix for sure. Here we go. Oh, it's header only. That's right. That's cool. Vector bool, vector bool, vector float, vector double. Okay. Vec three flow default p cool. This is sweet. What's so? Where's their overall vector class? Here we. Uh, it's not one of these. It's gonna be what? Oh wait, what was this last one here? Where's the oh vector common? Here we go. Right. I just want to take a peek at it for now. Min. Max. Oh, those are just min-max functions, mostly. Okay, don't need... Where is their, their vector base class? Swizzle! Man, this is heavily template-y. Swizzle!
Yeah, I wonder if I wonder if Clang does. Is it, wait, wait, is this it? Just no. Template back, yeah. Uh. Okay. Looks like a cool looks like a cool library, but uh I'm not I'm not gonna spend any more time on it right now. Okay, so back to back to what we were working on here. So about to set this breakpoint and run it, hit the breakpoint and figure out why the heck. It's not like why the heck the particles are all disappearing. All right, so the particles pause. It's currently 34, 28, negative 79. Oh, what's the Z0? It's, oh, it's because Z0 is negative 80. That's right. Okay. Because it has the offset. So, after that, After setting the pause, it's still got a good Z position. No, wait, there. Z oh. X is zero. What's R zero? R zero is okay. Min radius is okay x0 plus x1 minus x0 times a half. Oh, that would be zero, yeah. <laughs> what? That's just x, x1 plus x0 divide, times a half. Oh, uh, hey, sweet. Let's see. Let's see if it does have this on in Xcode. It's probably part of the optimize optimization. Um, enable additional vector extensions might be that one. Clang, yeah, platform default. Yeah, here you go, SSE. Let's see what the internet has to say about this. Xcode, what's it called again? Enable additional vector extensions. You know what? I haven't tried a release build in like six months, at least. I'm always running in a debug because I'm always debugging. Jeez. I don't know. I hope it actually does perform a lot better. But I'm not expecting it to. I expect for the debug version to run about as fast as the release, at least on Mac. I don't know why, but Songbringer did that. Like it was always the debug build and the release build on Mac were very close to each other in their speed. 
But on Windows, it was like night and day. On Windows, and when you compiled in release mode, it was just so much faster. Vectorizer. Oh, sweet. The loop vectorizer is enabled by default. And the SLP vectorizer. Okay, and you can control the width too, using a force vector width. That's cool. And this is also this is for Clang and LLVM, so it's not just Mac specific. Force vector and on interleave. You can hint at vectorization. That's cool. You can show what vector what which, which loops were vectorized. Cool. I'm gonna stash this as one in my pocket. So I can remember that link. This is cool. Thanks guys. I didn't know this was uh I didn't know about any of this stuff. You can even vectorize mixed types. So apparently it's just an on by default. Okay, so where were we? Well, yeah, we it had the zero x. So what does this do to the vector? Our z percent should become zero. So maybe the problem is that at the vector. Wait. Yeah, Casey, Casey Muratori, cool man. I like Casey. Yeah, that should be that'll be something I look into at some point. I gotta, I can optimize this this voxel engine far more than it currently is, and it's currently running at sixty frames a second when I'm not streaming. Um, so, but I'd like for it to be able to run at like. 30 frames per second while I'm streaming and uh, that's how that's I had to do that with Songbringer even though Song, Songbringer was really simple it's just a two-dimensional engine there's really not much to it at all um, except for its shaders and stuff like that and it ran at 30 frames a second while streaming consistently no problem and didn't even cause my CPU fan or my GPU fan to engage at all on an old laptop this is like a four-year-old laptop so what I would love for this voxel engine to do is to run at 30 frames a second without causing my CPU or GPU fans to engage. And currently it's not quite there. So there's some optimization that can be done. And uh, But once, it's, once it gets to that point, I'll be totally happy with it. I won't, I won't really need to optimize much more at all. 
because that's the that's the real linchpin. That's the like that's the uh, that's the part that's slowing it down the most is the rendering engine of all these voxels, especially when it rotates the camera. It has to change all of its um, all of its projections, all the all the x and y positions. The three-dimensional positions all have to change the two-dimensional positions. So there's a lot of matrix math there. Um, okay. And that matrix math is already SIMD and vector optimized because it's part of Cocos 2DX and Cocos 2DX does use those extensions manually, I think. Okay, let's do this again. The Z percent is going to be something real low. Yeah, it's so small. Oh, it's angles even going to be really, really tiny. So that turns its vector into straight, almost straight to the left, almost no Z movement. So that's quickly going, oh, wait, wait, what happens when we normalize it? Yeah, so, okay, so that's what, that explains it. The vector is going almost straight to the left. Okay, this is kind of janky, but what I want to try is doing this. The vector is Z% percent plus 1 times a half. So that it's all oh, it's never quite going the Z vector is never going down to 0. It's like going down to 0 0.5. Whew, man, I gotta, okay, I gotta switch from this whole concept. Oh, my light went out. I gotta go, oh no, oh no, it's still disappearing. Son of a, all right. I gotta get, okay, so let's, let's go, go back to the point where it was working. Oh, it may have just been that the, the reset X and the reset Y shouldn't have been part of that. Because this is... Hmm. Huh. Yeah, I've really got that that math. Oh, is it? Oh, hold on a second. Is this supposed to be two pi? Or oh, is this supposed to be half pi?
I don't think that helped. Okay, well, I really do have to move on and do the important stuff. So, and I don't have too much time left on this stream, but let's start the process of trying to figure out why those pink pixels are being left behind. That's the most important thing. So I'm going to check in my work so far with this kind spiral, uh, except for... I don't want to change. I don't want to check in data fire, but I do want to check in kit particles. And the render system. So git commit kit and source. So this is start. Okay, so how the hell am I gonna catch this bug in the next like 15 minutes? I want, so the problem is that it, we, we're seeing the ground through these particle systems. I'm curious about something. I, so currently with these this old particle system here it would only happen at a certain camera angle oh wait a minute See, like it's happening at that camera angle a lot. But sometimes it doesn't. And if I slow down the tick quite a lot there, you can see it leaving behind those pink pixels. Sometimes even two of them. Sometimes it even covers up the current particle with the pink. Huh. So what I'm wondering is if I change the density something bigger, does this simply having a lot more particles to process or something like that cause the pink to happen at angles where it used to not? Whoa, that's a lot of particles right there. <laughs> See, now they look okay. Oh, no, no. See, they're starting to get pink all weird. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, when I get the character. Oh, that's what it is. That definitely has something to do with it. Okay, okay, okay. That's definitely a huge clue. Okay, let's go back to the old density. Good, okay, at least I've got a clue of what's wrong here. Before I had no clue, now I have a clue. This is better than nothing. So I've got the, the these little cyan colored rectangles are showing the two dimensional bounding box of the entity. So the player has its own ant bounding box, which includes his shadow. And of course, Jib has one too. And the flame entity has one. But when we rotate the camera, right there we're okay. But right here, see now, We've got our bounding box colliding with the bounding box of the flame. So the flame is getting repainted. There, see? Yeah, that's it. When we get Jib away from it, there's no more pink. 
But when I stand near it, boom, we get the pink. Stand away from it, it goes back away. Okay, that's got to be the problem. And okay, I've dealt with this problem before. Yes, this is a huge breakthrough. Yeah. I love having programming buddies. You guys understand these victories, right? This is a huge victory right there. Just to be, the understanding is the biggest part of it. It's like, what the heck's going on here? Okay, so, all right, I've dealt with this issue before, and what it was before was that the, um, Oh, I changed the vec. Oh gosh, this was a crazy bug to solve. It took all day, but I did get it fixed. And but this is kind of like that issue, but not quite. The problem was that when we were repainting an entity, the needs paint. It didn't go to the repaint until unless it needed the paint. I know, right? The little small issues that take you all day. And it turns out to be one line of code. That's what this was right here. This one line of code was missing right there. And, well, I didn't know it needed to be missing, right? It was more just, it wasn't written yet. But this is what it needed to be right there. And that fixed this pink issue with the whole overlapping bounding boxes and all that for almost every entity, but these particles work a little bit different and then they actually, when you refresh the model for the character or the entity or whatever you're representing at the moment, you it adds, the particle system goes and actually adds voxels to the, to the box, the box 2D, and then it goes and paints it Oh, is it? Okay, maybe it's that, um, let's look through render system for particles. One point. Rating party! Sweet! What's up, pocket watch? Yo! A week's figuring out why your shader code wasn't working properly? It wasn't being called! Oh! Oh man, gosh, some dude programming, right? Oh, is it? Oh, maybe it's just this. Maybe it needs to have e dot render dot set um, set the paint flag. What Songbringer? It's a it's a game for PCs. It's like Zelda. Imagine the very first Zelda, but if it were sci-fi and it were set in like a like a Star Wars type universe. It's kind of what Songbringer is. It's like the first Zelda, a lot like the first Zelda, but with modern shaders and graphics and other types of things. And um, there's elements you can combine. Like you can get a flaming sword. You have bombs. You can throw your top hat like a boomerang. You have a little flying robot friend named Jib. Um, you, it also is, uh, yeah, Kingdom, right, yeah, it's, it's definitely in that pixel art, art style of, like, Kingdom, there's so many other pixel art games that are, that are very similar in art styles, because it's all pixel art, you know, with 32-bit colors, right, all, most of today's pixel art is, like, with, doesn't it, it really looks great, yeah, Kingdom's got a good art style. And their their whole shader with the with the water really helps too. That's really neato. Yeah, but so now I'm working on a new game. So uh, Songbringer is single player. Well, you can actually play with a, a friend. It's sort of like co op mode. It's uh it's but it's mostly a single player game. But this new game I'm writing is in the Songbringer universe and it's multiplayer. So it's uh so yeah, that's what this code is I'm working on right now for a new game engine. I think we need this. E dot render dot flags dot set C render needs paint. Right? Whenever we tick the 
Wait, do we already have that somewhere? Yeah, oh. This is in TIG 3D Entity. We got C rendered model dirty. Where is this at? This is in refresh model. I think we need either either one of these. We set, set the model dirty. We also need to repaint the entity. Okay, let's give that a shot. <laughs> so that's a one-liner fix. Maybe this works. Oh, cross your fingers. I'm so hoping this works. Okay, so we're going to stand right behind. Oh my god, it, it worked! Yes! Oh, sweet. That was it. Oh my god, I can't believe it! I just... I just did a day's worth of work in 15 minutes right there. Welcome to programming. Hell yes. Oh, oh, I love moments like this. Is this totally working at all angles? I can run behind it and it's not like in no, no issue. It just needed to paint the voxels. No wonder it was working on some frames and it wasn't working on other frames because some frames it was like, yep, I already drew that. But other frames, it was like, hey, I, I, uh, I updated all these particles, but I didn't paint it. Boom. Oh, that's so huge. Check that in. <laughs> right? It's always a one... Oh, stuff like that's always a one-liner, huh? There you go. Boom. Check in render system. Bug fixed. Stream about to be over. I got it. I got evening stuff to get done. All right, so git commit source fix particle system pink pixels pixel bug issue. All right, well, there you have it. It's been another live stream from your old friend, Wizard Foo. Uh, I'm gonna get back to I gotta do some e evening stuff. Have you guys seen this art I'm working on? Check this out. I'm working on some key art for this uh, for this game. So I'm thinking it will maybe look something like this. The key art image title will be like up here. So yeah, see you guys. Have a great have a great night. Like this will be where the title is. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys all next time.